What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about my filming equipment. I'll show you a little snippet of my filming setup. First off though, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos that I upload and make sure to hit the notification bell so you can get a message on your phone every single time that I upload a video. You will be the first one to know about it. This video here has been highly, highly requested for a while now and I'm just now getting to it because I really wanted to make sure I had everything lined up and I had my setup down to the T. Over the past few years and the past few months that I've been doing YouTube, my setup has changed because I have moved or because I just changed up the space where I got new equipment. So the setup that I have now has been the setup I've been using for the past few months and you guys seem to really like it. I get questions about camera, about lens, about equipment almost every single day throughout different videos on my channel or through DMs on Instagram. So this video is gonna be just, I'm gonna break it down and tell you everything that I use. Plus I include little things that I use that make a big difference when you're filming video. So if you're thinking about starting a channel and you just want like a small easy setup that's gonna get the job done, that is exactly my setup. It's not extravagant, but it gets the job done. And I think the equipment that you use really makes, it, it makes a huge difference. Before I even tell you what camera I use, I wanna tell you how I started off my channel. When I first started my channel, I started filming on my iPhone 4, I think it was. That's how I started my channel. I didn't really care too much about quality. I just liked making videos, so that's what I started with. And then I upgraded to my Sony NEX 3N camera, which is this one right here. Ooh, it's this one right here. This did the job for me for a while. And the camera that I use now is the Canon T5i. I first started using this camera with the lens that it came with. It was the 1855 millimeter lens and used that for a few months and I decided to upgrade because I felt like the lens wasn't doing the job for me anymore. It was very fuzzy and it wasn't as crisp as I wanted it to be. So I upgraded to the, what is this, the 50 millimeter lens. I mistake this one for the 30 millimeter, but it's the 50 millimeter lens. And you can find this lens on Amazon. You can find it at Best Buy. I got it at Best Buy because it was the same price and I was able to get it that same day. That is the lens that I'm using right now. I'll go ahead and switch between this one and the 1855 so you can see how it looks. And then I also have the 10 to 18 millimeter lens, which I don't use that much, but I just have it just in case I need it. And then this one right here is the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. So you can see a side-by-side -side comparison here. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the 18 to 55 millimeter lens so you can see what it looks like if you were just to pick up the camera and use the lens that it has. All right, so I switched the lens and I know it looks super dark, but I have the camera on the same exact settings, but with a different lens. So I wanted you to get the idea of the, the look and how it would be if you kept this lens with the same settings that I just had. But luckily on the Canon T5i, you're able to change the settings to make the lighting a lot better. So I have my vlog camera right here so I can show you what I'm moving on my software. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the software that I use later on. Right here, where my mouse is, if I go upward, it makes it darker. So I keep that all the way up to 30. And here, if I change it downward, it also makes it darker. So if I want to brighten up my screen while I have this lens on, I go up this way and you can see the screen is getting brighter. But the higher the iOS, the less sharp and crisp the quality is. Even though it looks better on here, it gets a little tiny bit fuzzy as well. But the good thing about this lens is that you can have it further away and you can see more of your background, you can see more of yourself. If I were to zoom out, 
you can see a lot more of my room and if I zoom in you can see me a lot better so that's a good thing about this lens with the 55 millimeter lens you cannot zoom in and out you just you're stuck there you have to move the camera if you want to go further away or if you want to get closer and let me show you this lens here side by side to the 10 18 millimeter you can see a a size difference here I do want to get the 30 millimeter lens just because it's a little further out and it's not so zoomed in but you still get that nice lighting so we're back to the 50 millimeter lens you can see the quality is so much better my background is blurred it's a lot more crisp and bright that's why I love this lens and for beginners it's perfect because I think the lens is under $150 which is a steal when it comes to lenses because lenses can be anywhere from like three, four, five hundred dollars to a thousand and higher than that. So what you can even do if you want to start with great quality but not spend as much, you can get the Canon T5i camera body only and then get the $150 lens. This lens here, which is not as much and it might come out a little bit cheaper than if you were to get the T5i with the 18 55 millimeter lens that I used earlier. So that's the camera and the lens that I use. Canon T5i with the 50 millimeter lens. This camera here does have a flip out screen as well. I'm able to see myself up there and I'm able to see myself down here with my EOS Utility 2 software. If you're just starting a YouTube channel and you want to slowly build your quality and you just want to like get started with it really fast you can just use the microphone that the camera comes with it's the quality is okay I'll go ahead and show you the audio right now right now as I'm talking this is how the audio sounds if you use just the EOS T5i microphone and it sounds good but it's not as crisp once again you do get some background noise and if I'm quiet you can hear a lot of what's going on outside so you can hear like there's kids downstairs that are screaming. You can probably just hear wind and background noise so it's not as crisp and solid. Whereas now I'm using the microphone that I purchased on Amazon. And this one is called Power Device Lapel Mic. And this microphone was very inexpensive. And again, it makes a huge difference. The only thing I don't like about the mic is that you have to have it clipped onto something. It's connected to my iPhone, which I'm using the recording, the little recording app on my iPhone. And it's connected to that. But I have to have it clipped very close to me. If not, the audio isn't good. So right now I have it clipped to my laptop. Let me show you on the vlog camera once again so you can see what I'm talking about. You can definitely clip it onto your sweater if you want. You can hear the audio changing up. In my videos, I don't like to show that I have a microphone on my neck. I like to have it away from me so you can't see it on screen. But it's definitely an option if you don't mind, you know, having the microphone just sitting right there. I do have a few other mics that I purchased, but I just don't like the quality as much as I do with this really small mic, which is crazy because I thought the more you would invest in a microphone, the bigger the microphone, the better it would be. But I was, I was just very wrong. For some reason, they just don't do the job for me. This one is the Tackstar microphone purchased on Amazon as well. And it worked pretty good for the first few months. But after a while, I, I was getting really tired of hearing that like hissing noise in the back. It wasn't as crisp as I wanted it. It's all about being crisp, okay? And it was not that for me. I also purchased a Rode mic, which I've heard really good things about. And it also still had that hissing noise in the background, the white noise. I don't know what it is. I've even tried using softwares to remove that sound, but it's it's still there. It's still there. But this is the one that I got. A lot of people say it's really, really good and it just didn't work out for me. Um, I'm thinking of selling this one because it is a good microphone for other things. And there are people out there who can figure out how to use this microphone without the hissing sound, but I just can't. And it also came with this little, um, Thing to go over the top of the mic. If any of you guys are interested in purchasing this microphone, I'm gonna sell it for way cheaper than I purchased it for. Um, but yeah, it's 
it's a bestseller. It's one that a lot of bloggers and a lot of YouTubers use. I just cannot seem to figure it out for myself. So that's that. I gave it a try. Just didn't work for me. Another necessary thing when you're a YouTuber or a blogger, you need memory cards to take photos and take videos. You have to have memory cards. So I usually get the SanDisk ones. I have a lot of different ones here. I have 32 gigabytes and then I have some 64 gigabytes. Lately I've been getting the 64s just because it holds a lot more and I'm able to record for a longer period of time without having to go in and change the memory card. So that's always a plus. So I would suggest doing 64 and higher, especially if you're doing video. A memory card that I really don't see people talk about a lot, but it's so convenient and genius. It's the iFi Mobi or Mobi memory card. It looks just like this. And I went on Amazon last night to see if it was like in stock, but it said something about like different sellers selling it. The people that I bought it from don't sell it anymore or something like that. But it is such a good and smart idea because with the camera like the Sony NEX3N, this camera does not have Wi-Fi in it. So if you want to take a photo and send it to your phone, you can't unless you get a memory card like this. So you just put this in the camera, you take your photos, then when you're ready to download the photos into your phone, you get the app that is for this card. You download your photos into that app and then you save them on your phone and the photos you took five, 10, 20 minutes ago, you can get them instantly on your phone, which is amazing because I was stuck when I really wanted to take outfit pictures or makeup pictures outside when I was out and about. And I didn't want to carry my laptop with me just to transfer the photos into my phone to be able to post them on Instagram, you know? So it's very convenient to have a memory card like this. You just never, you just never know. So that's that. Let's talk about what tripod I use for my camera. I also got it on Amazon, of course. So it's just the Amazon Basics tripod. It's a 60 inch one so i'm able to raise it really really high and i'm able to use it for a lot of different things i've had this tripod for a while now and it's lasted me a long time the first tripod i got i purchased it at target and it broke within like a month it was just trash so i got this one it's super heavy duty and i've moved it around i've taken it places i've made it small and made it big i've taken it with me to travel and it hasn't broke anywhere it's all still intact and working perfectly for me so it's definitely a tripod that i recommend now that i've talked about the just basic things that i use to film a basic standard video i'm going to go ahead and talk about those little accessories that make a big big difference one i've already shared with you which is the iFi card that has the Wi-Fi. Another thing that makes a big, big difference is having those backup batteries for when your camera dies. Not only that though, one thing that I discovered by searching on Amazon is that there's an extension cord that has a battery that you put into your camera and the battery like never, it never dies. As long as that cord is plugged into an outlet and it's getting power, you don't have to worry about your camera dying as you're filming. So I can sit here and film for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and my camera is never going to die as long as that little battery is in my camera. So that is very convenient. Again, all of this will be linked down below. This adapter that I'm talking about is from the brand Capaxin and it is so handy. I was trying to find something that would just make it work and I wouldn't have to constantly be switching out the battery because when you're switching out the battery, you change the angle, sometimes the lighting changes or you have to re, uh, you have to refocus yourself and it just throws it off. So having this is very convenient because it just, like I said, it keeps going until you basically turn the camera off. And because I have that adapter, I don't need to buy backup batteries since I'm not really going to film with the battery itself, I'm filming with the adapter, but you could buy backup batteries in case you just want to have them for when you're out taking pictures or something. If you're vlogging and you're using a camera like the Sony one I showed you, you can have something like this. This is from Wasabi Power. 
and it came with two batteries so you can put it in here and charge it overnight make sure you have both batteries charged plus the one that's already in the camera and you'll have three batteries to work with for the entire day that you're filming plus this one here comes with a car charger so if you're out and about vlogging and somehow all three batteries are dead you went through all three of them you can be charging the other two meanwhile you're using your last battery that you have so very convenient another very very convenient uh, item here that'll just make your life a lot easier when you're filming. Also when you purchase the Canon T5i camera, it already comes with the battery and the adapter to charge it. You don't have to worry about purchasing this separately. So if you get other batteries, you can just use the same one to charge those up as well. Another cool thing to have when you're taking photos especially is a wireless remote. And this I don't use as much just because now I have my EOS utility and I'm able to use this to take photos or whatever. But if I'm not home or if I don't have somebody to take photos for me and I wanna take photos, I have this wireless remote and I don't have to worry about setting like a 10 second timer or anything like that. I can just set myself up with a click of a button. It'll go ahead and take the photo for me. And this one's from also Amazon Basics. Obviously you can purchase it on Amazon and it comes with a little bag so you don't lose it. And it's very small so you can take it with you. Plus it's wireless so you don't have to connect it to your camera. With the Canon T5i camera, as I said, the cool thing is you get the EOS utility software. But um, another good thing to have is an AV out cord to be able to plug it into your computer. So you get the AVA out cord, but I also got an extension cord for that, just in case I want my camera to be really far out so you're able to see my background more, but I still wanna be able to use the EOS utility tool. So it makes the cord a lot longer and then I'm able to plug it into the USB part on my laptop. If your lens is really zoomed out, like if you use the 18 to 55 millimeter lens, you might not need to get an extension for your AV out cord, but it's cool just to have it in case you need it for maybe outfit of the day shots, if your camera's gonna be really far, but you still wanna see yourself on the EOS utility, it's really good to have. I'm gonna mention a few more accessories and then I'll go ahead and jump into how I use the EOS utility software, what uh, laptop I use, also what editing software I use for my videos. The last few accessories I have, this is like a camera, holder. I don't really like this one because it almost looks like, I don't know, it doesn't look like something I would want to hold like this. Or if you, you see this laying around, it just doesn't look safe. And somebody might get scared because they're, they might think it's something else. But this is actually for twisting onto your camera for when you're vlogging. And this makes it a lot easier as well because the video is a lot more stable so you can see I hold it like this and it's a lot easier to hold you don't have to worry about holding the camera up here or covering the microphone or anything you're just hold it here talk to the camera and you're good there's a better one out there that's more of a tripod so it's a tripod and a holder in one I want to get that one when I get my new vlogging camera because if I want to set it down it's gonna stay in place whereas I if I put this down on a desk it's gonna tilt over and fall but this is just the one that I first got to make things a little bit easier it's not the best one but I just wanted to mention it because it's just what I used and the last accessory that I want to share is this phone tripod thing so when I'm doing Instagram live I use this and again it's one of those things that makes life so much easier all I do hopefully the the audio doesn't mess up because I'm using my iPhone as my audio you can see my screen right here as I'm recording myself but you put your iPhone on here and then you twist this onto your tripod and you put it at whatever level you want and you're able to Instagram live or go on Snapchat and it makes it so much easier without having to uh, put your phone like on a stack of books or figuring out how you're gonna set yourself up for your Instagram live. It's another one of those things that it doesn't cost a lot but it makes a big difference. Plus you're able to twist this and it 
gets bigger or smaller to adjust to whatever phone size that you have, which is also very convenient. Plus you can twist it sideways if you want so that it's, you know, this way. Those are all of the little accessories that I use. Now let's talk about the computer I use. I have the MacBook Air. Now, would I recommend this one for video editing and stuff like that? No, just because it's not the best as far as holding files. I find that I have to delete stuff very often in order to keep my computer free because I haven't purchased any of the, um, I don't know what they're called, but you can save files on there through your computer. I haven't purchased any of those, so I'm always having to delete stuff, which sucks because I'm not able to keep my files and go back to them and things like that. External hard drives, that's what they're called. If you buy those and you put your files on there, of course you'll have a lot more room on your laptop, but that's just one thing to keep in mind. Also, it doesn't work as fast as a computer would work. I do, I personally think that for social media, for YouTube, it's easier to use a Mac laptop just because it's I personally, I think it's a lot easier. I used to use like my PC and I had a Windows computer and it just didn't work as well for me and it wasn't as convenient and as easy. But yeah, I use a MacBook Air and I don't have anything extra on the computer. I don't have Final Cut Pro, I don't have Adobe. I just use iMovie to edit all of my videos and it works just fine, but I do want to upgrade to get the, fin the Final Cut Pro, but I don't wanna get Final Cut Pro until I upgrade my computer because I want to make sure that I don't download Final Cut Pro and then I don't have enough storage or room in my computer to actually edit videos, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna wait till I upgrade and get a computer. I'll lastly show you the settings that I use on my camera because I know that can be very helpful. I've watched so many videos on the Canon T5i where they don't show you what settings I use and it's just like. So I'm gonna go ahead and share with you all the settings that I use for what I'm doing right now to get this lighting, this quality. So let me, I'm gonna use my vlog camera to show you. Sorry, actually before I show you the settings, I'm gonna show you my filming setup. I think it'll make a little more sense to show you my setup first and my lighting, that way you can see why I use the settings that I use. Okay, so I film in the bedroom. If you can see, this is my bed here. So I set up my chair here, which is also from Amazon, and then I have a stool, my laptop, my camera, and the only lighting that I have going on in here is the natural lighting I'm getting outside and if it gets too dark like it was getting earlier in my video, I use this lamp here. I just take off the shade and I'm using a cool tone light bulb. That is it. I do not have soft boxes as you can see. I do own some, but I do not like to use them. I use them very, very rarely. If I'm doing a makeup tutorial where I have a lot more products and I need more room, instead of using this stool, which I got at Target by the way, instead of using the stool, I take that off and I have a foldable table that I got from Walmart and I just put that there and I have a lot more room and I still have room to put my laptop. So there you can see the lighting and what I'm working with. I'm a little more up close here so you can see my mic is plugged in there plugged in to my phone and my phone is right next to it. So this is my view when I'm sitting down and filming. I have my laptop, camera, the lamp over there which I could see myself in through the little mirror. But that's, it's very basic. Nothing else happening around, very clear, a lot of space and I'm able to get the lighting that I want and see myself perfectly. I'm on the iOS utility software and you can see the settings that I use right here. So you can even take a screenshot if you want. And this here, which is the shooting menu, I didn't even know you were able to do this till a few months back, but you're able to change the saturation, the contrast and everything. So this changed the game when it came to my videos. So I have the sharpness all the way up. My contrast is all the way low just because if it's high, it looks, it just looks weird. So I have it very, very low all the way. My saturation, I bump it up one. So it's right here. And then the color tone, I brought it down a notch once and you can just return. And the picture style I have it on is standard. Sometimes I do portrait, sometimes I do faithful. 
for this video I'm using standard so you're able to see yourself of course you can also take photos using this button here if you'd like and this button down here is how you record so you can see I'm currently recording you can also flip the screen here and you focus yourself you have to stop recording for this let me stop recording so in order to refocus yourself you have to click this here which is sorry movie servo af autofocus click that and it'll refocus you and if you want to stay you want it to stay focused where it's at and you don't want it to constantly be going in and out and refocusing you unclick that and it'll stay focused the entire time you're also able to adjust color you can change the white balance here i have it on auto but you could change it to daylight shade cloudy and all these other ones and i think that's pretty much it as far as eos utility to download the eos utility you can just find it on the canon website or again on the cd that your camera comes with I think I covered everything. I covered every single thing that I use for filming videos, for taking photos, and even for my Instagram live. I also shared some of the software that I use on my computer, what computer I use, and the little accessories that I have. I'm, I'm pretty sure I covered it all. So I hope that you found this video helpful. I really wanted to include every single thing in here that was going to be helpful and just everything that I use because a lot of you seem to like the quality of my videos and my photos. So of course I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything so i hope like i said this video was helpful if it was please give this video a thumbs up also let me know in the comment section if you're thinking of starting a youtube channel this year and what your channel is going to be about i would love to know or if you have any other tips or recommendations or just if you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below thank you all so much for watching i love you all los quiero mucho and i'll see you in my next video mm -hmm.